how do you captivate your audience? Today I want to talk about the elements that I think are the most important in order for your audience to be glued with their ears and eyes on you. Hi and welcome to today's video. In case you don't know me yet, my name is Freya Casey. I'm a professional singer and vocal coach from Germany. Now, I have a lot of experience being on stage myself and also coaching my students, being on stage, going to auditions or live performances, shows, all different scenarios. And um, here are the things that I think are the most important elements of anyone who's a great artist who captivates their audience. Number one, it's a high level of accuracy. If you have a high level of accuracy in your singing, you're not sloppy, but you really execute very accurately. That is gonna just radiate skill. You know, it's just like, people are like, wow, it's just another level of skill. And I get this all the time because I, I have like a pet peeve, you know, it's like your enunciation has to be great and your intonation has to be great. Like all these, I, like I can't even help it um, when I sing I always pay attention to like a, this really high level of accuracy. And that's a lot of people always tell me is like, oh, it sounded so amazing. And it's not because I could sing higher than anyone or louder than anyone, but it's because I pay attention to details and I try to be extremely accurate about the details. So whether it's the dynamic markings, whether it's the enunciation, whether it's the rhythm, whether it's the phrasing, whether it's the register transitions, you know, anything that has to do with musicality and technique when it comes to singing, you don't want to have a sloppy transition. You don't want to slide in a sloppy way. You want to land on the pitch. Your intonation needs to be extremely accurate. The more accurate you can make it, the higher skill level just comes across and people automatically are like, okay, this sounds really good. Even someone who's not a musician who may say of themselves like, oh, I just, I'm tone deaf, I don't really know. But even someone like that, they may not be able to put a name tag on what's right or what's wrong, but anyone can hear like, this is good or nah, it's not good. <laughs> so don't underestimate your audience. A high level of accuracy is extremely important. Number two is creating the illusion of effortless singing and by effortless I don't mean that you should just like oh you know never be emotionally invested or physically invested but it needs to come across as if you know you're telling a story here whatever the intensity of the story is needs to come across but it's like you're telling the story but you just you happen to sing it <laughs> you just happen to sing it you know but nobody should focus on Ooh, now she's singing low and ooh, now she's singing high or ooh, now she's or he's singing loudly or ooh, now it's really soft. Ooh, now it's falsetto. It just needs to be this illusion like I'm just kind of doing it. So what you don't want to do, you don't want to be all tense and tight and have all these expressions on your face and, you know, your body language needs to just radiate I'm just doing this easily, I, although it may not be easy. Oh yes, definitely it may not be easy because <laughs> singing is really hard work. It can be very, very hard work physically, but it's almost like you want to create that illusion. You know, if the song wants you to be like very intense, you have that intensity in your body, but not because singing is so hard for you. Um, your audience should never say, Oh, look at that. Their veins are about to pop. Look, they're really tense because the singing is so hard for that person. That's what you don't want. You want just to create this illusion like, well, I just happen to sing this, but I'm just kind of doing it like this. And how do you achieve this? Of course, I have tons of videos about that. You don't want to have tenseness anywhere. Like, you know, the, the tenseness in your jaw and your shoulders, in your forehead, in your face. You, you want to have good technique because if you have that and you can separate the technique from your expressiveness, then you have a really good chance of just kind of, you know, your technique is flawless. It goes on and your body, you can do whatever you want with your body, but it's not, you know, it's not like I don't have to 
do this when I sing a high pitch or this when I sing a high pitch. I can look relaxed and sing a high pitch, but I could also look like I'm very invested without being too tense. Number three, so important is your personality. You have to let your personality flow into your performance. The song has to mean something to you. If it doesn't mean anything to you, it's not, surely not going to mean anything to your audience. You have to connect to it. It has to be relevant to you and it, there has to be subtext that you, you know, it's something very specific that you think about when you sing the song. And uh, don't try to be someone else. Yes, I sing songs, you know, that are not my actual personality, like I kissed a girl or something. That's not exactly me and I'm not that sassy. But, and I sing, you know, I sing some Amy Winehouse songs. That doesn't mean that I couldn't be in that role. But when I get into that role, it's almost like I still want to have my personality, but I, I want it, you know, I want it, like I become that person, but I keep my own personality. You don't want to try to play a game with your audience and be like, you know, you, if you try too hard to act out something, it should never really be acting. So acting really isn't acting. Acting really is the moment you're acting really, you know, you're doing good acting is the moment when it's not acting. It's, it's you. You become the story. You become the person that is singing those words. And that is your personality now. And actually, it's kind of fun to kind of slip into a personality that is not maybe exactly me, but there is a side of me that maybe wishes for it or wants to be naughty every once in a while. You know, we all have that side when we dream. Sometimes we do things that we wouldn't normally do. But in the dream, it's like, yeah, that is really cool that I'm doing this. The next thing is connection. You don't want to be kind of putting up a wall between you and your audience. And, you know, if you let your personality in and if you connect to the song, you also want to connect to your audience. You don't want to be like, oh, I'm so sorry you have to listen to me. I'm so embarrassed. That is a huge disconnect. You want to connect. You want to be grateful that your audience is there and you want to be on their level. You don't want to be like, oh, I'm so much better because I'm the performer and I'm an awesome singer and they're all coming just to watch me. You also don't want to be like, oh, I'm just so bad. I don't know. Like maybe I'm not perfect and uh, I feel really bad. You know, what if I'm making a mistake and they're all having to listen to me? They're going to just not love what I do. You have to put yourself on the same level as if you were singing to you know, or talking to a dear friend that you're really close to. And always remember that everyone in your audience is a human being and they have feelings and they have a story and they have a background and they have this entire life. And um, they can connect with everything that you're singing about if you open up and if you become vulnerable, if you just let it happen to where, you know, it's like, okay. Here I am. I'm completely opening up. I'm not above you or below you. I'm, I'm, I'm all, we're all kind of in the same boat, right? We're human beings and we've all lived through this like heartbreak or el elation. We've all lived through this, right? And so you're just talking on eye to eye level to your audience. And that is that connection that we really need. The next thing is that you have to be unapologetic. And I just touched on that. You can't go and perform whether it's in a studio or on stage and be like oh yeah i'm so sorry that it's like i know i'm i don't look perfect maybe my dress isn't great and um yeah i'm not flawless and i'm sorry i apologize in advance you have to be unapologetic about what you do you are you and that's perfect you don't want to be Celine Dion. You don't want to be Sam Smith. Um, you can learn from them and incorporate elements in your performance, but you don't want to try to be someone that you're not. And you are you and that's amazing. And all you want to do is be you and you have to be unapologetic about it. So whenever you step up in front of the microphone or the camera or the stage or all of the <laughs> all together, you want to be unapologetic. You have to have that confidence of I'm here and that's perfect right now. And um, I'm not perfect, but no one is, <laughs> you know, no one is perfect. 
and that's okay. In my, in my imperfection, I'm so perfectly imperfect. Does that make sense? And that's what makes us human. That's what makes like every creature, you know, we are so awesome, but at the same time, the awesomeness is because it's so unpredictable sometimes and it is so not perfect. And that's, that's actually what makes it amazing. And that's what makes it actually kind of perfect of not being perfect because then everyone would be the same and it'd be so boring if everything was so predictable. You are unpredictable in some ways and that is great. Don't apologize for being you. The next thing is no holding back. You have to open up, you have to dare. You have to let down your guards, become vulnerable and take risks also, whether it's, you know, vocally, go ahead and just belt it out. Don't do anything that is like way beyond your skill level, but don't be too shy about like, I don't know, maybe it's not cool. Like maybe it's embarrassing if I'm too loud. People think I'm trying too hard. If your skill level is there, go for it all the way. You can't do it halfway. If you're gonna do something, you're just gonna have to follow through all the way. People can tell when you're hesitating and you're intending something, but you're not quite following through. That is a big turnoff. It's just like, okay, now they doubted themselves and that, that just comes across. So no holding back, take risks, take those risks, go ahead. And if you feel like you're, you're, I don't know, you're lying down on stage or you're doing a headstand, if that's authentic in that moment, just do it. Don't think about it. Just go for all the way what you're feeling. And don't feel like, oh, what am I doing with my hands? Does it look awkward? Just do it all the way. You know, how would you like <laughs> talk with your hands or, you know, sing out loud or take that long break like of silence just to create tension. If that's what's authentic in that moment, do it all the way. And the next thing is subtext, subtext, subtext. Every song that I work on, you know, some songs can be quite abstract and it really is helpful to have something a little bit more specific. So I'm thinking about a specific person, who am I even singing to or about? Um, where am I? What's the temperature? You know, like, am I cold? Am I hot? How am I actually feeling in this song? Uh, specifics and subtext. I do this a lot, you know, instead of just thinking about the actual lyrics that are written on the page, think about how would I paraphrase that? How would I paraphrase that? What is the subtext? There's a lot more subtext than what's in the song. So instead of I love you, you could just have all the subtext of, oh my goodness, I love you because I've never felt that way. When I'm, when, when I'm with you and you like being in your arms is just amazing because it just makes me feel warm and fuzzy. And also you bring me a coffee every morning and um, you are just like when I look in your eyes, it's just I, it takes my breath away and I get butterflies in my belly and you are the best human being and you treat me so nicely. You do all these things for me. I mean, like you have all the subtext that is so much more specific than just the phrase I love you because that's it could be broad, you know, <laughs> you have to make it mean something very specific. So writing down subtext can be really helpful sometimes. If you have a song that you can't quite connect to, it's a little hard or the words are just hard to understand, try to think about the subtext. You know, what is the subtext? Really, really helpful. So that's it. Those are the things that I think are the most important aspects to really, truly captivate your audience. Let me know in the comments if you have anything to add here. Thanks for watching. Check out all my free stuff on my website, masteryourvoice.tv. And until next time, always keep a song in your heart and always keep on singing. I must be strong to carry on, cause I